All right. So we've introduced the idea of a vector, and at this point you're probably kind of wondering, like, all right, isn't it just kind of like a, they're just points, right? It's just points with different brackets. Like, what's the, why do we care about these vectors? What, what is new? Um, and what's new is that with vectors, we have a sense of algebra, right? Um, because we think of vectors as these directed segments. Um, we, can, we can start putting them together, right? So it doesn't necessarily make sense to say like, hey, I have two points, P and Q. Like, what's P plus Q? Like, adding points doesn't necessarily make sense, right? Um, but think about the following, right? So think about, and again, if we think of vectors as like a means of, of giving directions, right? So imagine you have point P. And so P, I'm going to give coordinates x1, y1. Okay, and up here I've got another point Q with coordinates x2 and y2. And some other point, let's say R, with coordinates x3 and y3. Right. Now, there are sort of three vectors I can form, <coughs> well, up to sort of direction, because I could always reverse the, direct, uh, the direction of the vectors. But we can do this. Let's do, let's do this vector v. All right, so v is the vector pq. Okay, and we'll do the vector, say, w, which is, say, qr. And we also could draw, why not, this vector u, the vector pr. Um, and then you can reasonably wonder, like, what's the relationship between these two vectors, right? And so, if you think in terms of giving directions, right? Um, if I want to tell you how to get from the point P to the point R, uh, well, I could give you sort of the direct route. I could say, well, okay, well, you just you know you go over, um, you know, you add x3 minus x1 to your x1, so you go over that much in the x direction, and then y3 minus y1, you go up that much in the in the y direction, and and you'll be there. But I don't know, maybe there's like construction on the way or something. Um, and so instead of telling you how to get directly from P to R, I first tell you how to get from P to Q, and then I tell you how to get from Q to R. I've still, in, in the end, it's maybe indirect, but I still have told you how to get from the point P to the point R, just via some intermediate point, right? And so you can start thinking about the, the component form of these vectors. So we can say, okay, so vector V is the vector x2 minus x1, and then y2 minus y1. The vector w is x3 minus x2, and then y3 minus y2, right? Um, okay, well, what about you? u is x3 minus x1 and y3 minus y1. But one of the things that you might notice here is that uh, x3 minus x1, I could write that as x3 minus x2 added to x2 minus x1, right? Because if I add those two together, the x2s are going to cancel out. And same thing here for the y's. Uh, I can do y3 minus y2 added to y2 minus y1. And of course, I could have added them in the other order. Order of addition doesn't really matter. Okay. And, and so then we realize, oh, well, OK, so um, the vector u, one way to think about getting that vector u is if I if I add together the x components for v and w, I get the x component for u. And if I add together the y components for v and w, I, I get the y component for u. Right? And, and so this leads us to say, well, why don't we just define u 
to be V plus W. You can do that, right? And, and so the definition that you would make would look like this. So we'd say given, say, the vector V equal to, let's say, A1, B1, and W equal to the vector A2, B2, we can define V plus W to be A1, plus A2, and then B1, plus B2. We can add them together like that. Right. And that works. Okay, That works as a definition of addition. And of course, if we're in three dimensions, we just add a C1 and a C2 and add those together as well. And, and that checks out. Um, <coughs> the other thing to notice is we have sort of this, um, we call it a, like a tip to tail picture. Right? So there's there's a geometric rule here for adding the vectors, right? And so this actually sort of is something that you can make sense of in, in general, and you can play around and you can see that this will always work. That if, um, if this is V, and let's say that's W, well, what I can do is I could take a copy of V, because remember we can move the vectors around, okay? So I could draw another copy of, of V that has its tail at the tip of W, like that. There's another V. Or I could draw another copy of W that has its tail at the tip of V, right? Um, well, it turns out the, we get this parallelogram, and the diagonal of that parallelogram That's exactly V plus W, right? And, and it's just a matter of playing around with the coordinates a little bit to see why this works, right? That, um, you know, to get from the origin to the tip of V, um, just think about the X coordinate for a second, we would add A1, and then to get from the tip of V to the, you know, tip of, say, V plus W drawn like this, well, we would add the A2, sorry, so we'd add A1 and then A2, so we have A1 plus A2, right? Same thing for the Y coordinates. And of course, it doesn't matter if you do A1 plus A2 or A2 plus A1, you'll get to the same place in the end. Um, and, you know, so one of the things that you'll, you can see from this right away is that V plus W is also the same thing as W plus V, right? So that's pretty cool. So this gives me what we will refer to as vector addition. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll pause this video here. We'll come back. We'll do the next one. We'll talk about the other operation that we can do on vectors, which is called scalar multiplication.